Joining me now to dig deeper into this discussion on colonialism is Melissa Murray, professor of law at NYU and co-host of the Strict Scrutiny podcast. And Dr. Kayendi Andrews, not only is he a professor of black studies at Birmingham City University, but he was the first ever professor of black studies in the United Kingdom. He's also the author of the book, The New Rage of Empire, How Racism and Colonialism Still Rule the World. Uh, good morning to both of you. Thank you for being with us. Professor Andrews, let me start with you, because it's not that there that, that that, that people don't think that there's a space for this discussion, but there are a lot of people on my Twitter timeline right now saying today's not the day for this discussion. Your thoughts? Well, it's not a coincidence. I think this is an American channel. I mean, in the UK, it very much is a case of respect the Queen. We should all be very sad. We should all be mourning. But as you rightly point out, there are many people in this country, millions of people in this country, who have a very different relationship to the Queen because of the role of empire, because, I mean, she symbolizes a lot of the racism we've faced. So for a lot of us, we're not mourning today. Uh, Melissa, I, I, I don't mean to be unfair. Uh, I actually like the Queen. I, I think she was a, a great leader, and I, I credit her for being there at the end of the British Empire uh, and seeing it to its uh, to its proper death. But there is there are mixed feelings. There are a lot of people who have benefited from the British Empire, and a lot of people like me who were born in countries that were uh, former colonies that to this day do not thrive, and some of its people do not thrive because of the history of colonialism, not just British, but colonialism in general. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Ali. And I think one of the things that's been missing from the dialogue around the world and on social media is that there are actually people who do have respect, reverence, even affection for the queen. And many of them, many of us, are struggling to reconcile those very warm feelings with our very real objections to the legacy of colonialism in these countries, with which we have very strong ties, and the legacy of post-colonialism in those places. And I think you can do two things at once. Um, I think you have to do two things at once, and we have to both reckon with the mourning of this revered leader, but also with the legacy of the institution that she represents. So, uh, Professor Andrews, you you teach this, in fact, to your students. How do you uh, how do you express colonialism? What's the what's the short form of the effect of colonialism today? Is it is it was it bad? I, I, I draw the conclusion that, yes, it was bad. It was exploitative. It was violent. Uh, and it, 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 it was economic um, exploitation of, of people. Do you share the view? Is it bad? Of course. I mean, of course, that colonialism was bad. It was terrible. And if you just look at a map of the world by GDP per capita, the poorest countries today are in so-called sub-Saharan Africa, where the black people live, and the richest countries are the West, where white people live. We literally have a world which is in the image of white supremacy, which came from this colonial era. And the royal family, unfortunately, and the queen in particular, symbolized that system. That's one of the reasons she's so popular, is because she is a throwback to those colonial times when Britain was great and when Britain dominated the world. And you cannot separate that history from the from the poverty that we see around the world today. Like my family is predominantly Jamaican. Jamaica, there shouldn't be any black people in Jamaica. It's all slavery, and it's a very poor country. So these things aren't things which have happened in the past. They're things which are very much with us today. Melissa, tell me about you how you look at this because I've se I've seen that you've been on conversations in social media about this with people who are from diasporas uh, that were that were colonized by the British. Uh, tell me tell me about the complexity of your thought on this. Well, like Professor Andrews, I am also a descendant of Jamaicans. My parents were Jamaican immigrants, and although I was raised predominantly in the United States, I spent a lot of time in Jamaica during my childhood. I went to school in Kingston at one point, and I think it's hard to reconcile the way in which you literally live with the vestiges of a colonial past when you're living in a country like that. The streets are named for monarchs and aristocrats, and the infrastructure is very much something that is imposed by the British government, was placed there by the British government. And as Professor Andrew says, a lot of it hasn't been updated. The country is desperately poor in a lot of places. And it's hard to reconcile your affection for the queen and what she stands for without also grappling with what it means for the material conditions of your family and those that you love who continue to live in these places that were touched by the British Empire. So, uh, Kayendi, how do you reconcile that? Because I think what, what Professor Murray is bringing up is that it is difficult. It is difficult to hold these two thoughts, but we can hold these two thoughts. You can like the queen. You can uh, honor the fact that someone has passed, but you can say that she did. She did never, she didn't forsake the institution that was responsible for colonialism. She didn't forsake her ancestry that was responsible for, for that sort of thing. And maybe this is, in fact, the exact moment to have that conversation because it sits in the background of 
of people's minds. You teach it, you write about it, you think about it a lot, but a lot of people don't. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that the question is, do you, do you have affection? And I don't have any affection for the Queen. That's nothing personal against her. I don't know her. None of us know her, right? And it's sad that someone's passed away. But that affection doesn't exist for many of us. Like my grandmother's generation, they grew up in colonial Jamaica. She was taught to revere the Queen. She had a picture of the Queen on a wall till she died. But we grew up very different. We understood what the Queen was. The royalist and the monarchy represented the racism that my, my generation faced. So that, 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 there is no, there's no um, conflict. <laughs> we don't, we never have seen as a queen as someone who represents us, as someone who should represent us. And she's died, and it's sad. But there is literally no conflict. We can see the, the, the critical nature that has to be brought here. This is somebody who represented white supremacy and colonialism, and as you said, didn't didn't give reparations, didn't give up her wealth, didn't give up her power. She reveled in it. And I'm not sure why I should be sad today. And millions of us in this country have exactly the same feeling as me, I would say. Professor Murray, I had a, a discussion, probably more of an argument, about an hour ago with somebody who, uh, with whom I was having this discussion. And, and he said, well, where were you born? And I said, I was born in Kenya. And he said, well, that country has, uh, is one of 15 former colonial nations that have chosen the British monarch as their own monarch, as if to say, well, if you did that, then all of colonialism is, is for, forgiven and forgotten. But this is a case amongst people from post-colonial countries. Many of them do still keep the British monarchy uh, as their monarch and, 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 and have continued to be a member of the Commonwealth of Nations. Jamaica is a member of what the Commonwealth of Nations and is one of those Commonwealth realms that you've mentioned. Um, and again, I, I don't know that simply being part of the Commonwealth means that you cannot interrogate the meaning of colonialism, the legacy of post-colonialism, and what you want to do for your nation going forward into the future. This is a moment of transition for the British monarchy, for the royal family. They're moving on to a new leader. And I think it stands to reason that around the world, there may be countries who are wondering whether continuing to be a part of a monarchy is something that they should do for themselves and for their countrymen. Uh, Professor Andrews, do you think this whole episode of colonialism in that fashion is behind us? Because there are still exploited countries. There are still exploited people. It's no longer necessarily a white people versus people of color thing or European countries. Uh, how, how do you think about colonialism moving forward as opposed to looking at it from a, a, a rear view mirror? Well, no, I mean, the, all that's happened is colonialism has changed, right? So it is an European nation state dominated since the Second World War. There's been a very clear shift where America is now the center. Countries have their freedom in theory, but then places like Jamaica still have uh, the royal family as head of state. Uh, but actually, if you look at the economics of it, it's exactly the same. As I said earlier, the poorest countries in the world are in sub-Saharan Africa. The richest are in the, are in the West. You can see those massive imbalances of wealth which are causing migration crises. And actually, the basic logic of Western imperialism was that black and brown life is disposable in order so that white life can be enriched. And if you're honest and you look at the world today, that hasn't changed in any meaningful way at all. And the reason why I think someone, the reason why I think so many of us don't see the royal family as a, as a symbol and the queen as someone to look up to is because actually why that family is popular and why the queen was so popular is because she kind of represented imperialism in a, in a cuddly way that we all feel, felt warm about in some ways. And that's probably the, one of the worst things that can happen, right? If we were, were celebrating something, the royal family in this case, which can only be bad and just needs to be abolished. I appreciate it. this is a, a, a difficult conversation to have. It's probably not difficult for you, but it's a, it's a difficult moment in which to have this conversation. But I, I stand with those who think this is the right moment to have this conversation. Melissa Murray is a professor at the New York University School of Law and the co-host co -host of the Strict Scrutiny podcast. Dr. Kayandi Andrews is a professor of black studies at Birmingham City University and the author of The New Age of Empire.